Every year, millions of bars of olive oil soap are produced in factories. To supply this enormous demand, a significant amount of olive oil, caustic soda, and water is needed. But how are more than 50,000 soap bars made every day? We visited the soap factory to discover how one of the world's most popular soaps is made. Soap bars began to be commercialized in the late 19th century, and advertising campaigns contributed to increasing their popularity. Throughout the 20th century, soap manufacturing underwent significant evolution with the incorporation of ingredients such as glycerin and synthetic chemicals. These advancements enable the mass production of soaps of different types and fragrances. The process starts with the harvest of olives. The quality of olive oil depends largely on the quality of the harvested olives and the care in this process. Selecting the optimal harvest time and proper handling of olives are crucial for obtaining high-quality oil with good taste and aroma. Olive harvesting usually takes place in the fall, using specialized machinery for mechanical harvesting. Machines gently shake the trees to detach the olives, which fall onto a collecting canvas to prevent them from touching the ground and getting dirty. After harvesting, olives are inspected to remove impurities such as leaves, branches, and stones that may have fallen with them. The harvested olives are weighed and recorded to maintain precise control over the quantity of collected fruit. Next, they are transported from the field to the processing factory. Upon arrival at the factory, containers with olives are unloaded in a designated reception area. Conveyor belts facilitate the unloading and movement of olives to the processing area. Olives are transferred to a factory section specially designated for washing and cleaning. This process is carried out with a special washing machine with a constant flow of water that submerges the olives. Olives go through an initial washing process with water to remove surface dirt and other contaminants. The water used in this process is often recycled and purified to reduce water waste. After washing, olives are transported to a drying area, where excess water and moisture are removed. This is crucial to prevent unwanted water from entering the oil extraction phase. After the washing and cleaning process, clean and dry olives are transported to the grinding section of the factory. Olives are fed into grinding machines used to crush the olives and separate the pulp, skin, and pit. These mills use stone mills that crush the olives between two large circular stones. This technique is slower but can be considered a gentler extraction process that better preserves the flavor and quality of the oil. During the grinding process, the temperature must be controlled to avoid excessive heating of the paste. Excessive heat could damage the quality of the oil. After grinding, the olive paste is distributed to a machine called a centrifuge used to separate the oil from the rest of the components of the paste. The olive paste is fed into the centrifuge, which uses centrifugal force to separate the different components. Olive oil and water are separated from the solid part, consisting mainly of pulp and olive pit remnants. Once separated, the olive oil is collected and separated from the water during the agitation process. The liquid mixture passes through a centrifuge that uses centrifugal force to separate the olive oil from water and other components. The centrifuge rotates at high speed, and this force causes the less dense oil to separate and be collected in a separate compartment. Olive oil is stored in stainless steel tanks to protect it from light and air, which can cause oxidation. Once stored, the oil is sent to the soap factory. The factory receives the olive oil which is the main ingredient for making bath soap. The first stage begins with the reception of essential ingredients, olive oil, caustic soda, and water. Olive oil is checked to ensure it meets the necessary quality standards. Freshness, acidity, purity, and absence of impurities are verified. It all starts in a bubbling pot where vegetable fat reacts with sodium hydroxide, a caustic substance, to create soap. Sodium hydroxide is slowly poured into water to create a caustic soda solution. During this stage, the mixture generates heat, and the temperature of the caustic soda solution increases. The solution can reach quite high temperatures, so it is essential to handle with care and caution to avoid burns. The caustic soda solution must be stirred with a stainless steel spoon to ensure that it dissolves completely in water. 
This is done in a well-ventilated area to avoid inhaling toxic fumes. After preparing the caustic soda solution, it is allowed to cool to room temperature before using it in the soap manufacturing process. The dissolved caustic soda is highly alkaline and corrosive, so the preparation process must be done with protective equipment such as goggles and safety gloves. A worker adds the necessary amounts of oil and caustic soda to the cooking pot. The oil is heated, initiating the saponification chemical reaction, where the fatty acids in the oil react with caustic soda to form soap and glycerin. During this stage, constant stirring is essential to ensure that caustic soda mixes evenly with the oil. The mixture is brought to a boil while stirring for a day. The fatty acids in the oil react with the alkaline caustic soda, producing a thick soap paste that contains glycerin, a natural compound. Workers add more caustic soda and cook the soap paste at 120 degrees Celsius for another day. Constant stirring is crucial as it ensures even distribution of caustic soda throughout the oil, promoting proper saponification. Additives are incorporated into the soap mixture. Incorporation is done with gentle stirring to ensure even distribution in the soap mass. The mixture is continuously stirred until it reaches a point called trace. Trace is a critical point in the soap manufacturing process where the soap paste has thickened and resembles a thick cream. Next, the paste is washed with salt water two or three times. Each wash lasts half a day, removing impurities and glycerin, ensuring the soap has better stain-removing power for clothes. Throughout the day, workers repeatedly rinse the soap paste and let it rest for two days. They heat the paste for about 10 minutes at 70 degrees Celsius, enough to pump it to a series of superheaters. The superheaters heat the paste to 1,100 degrees Celsius. When the liquid soap exits the last superheater, it passes through a nozzle that sprays it onto the walls of an atomizer. The atomizer cools the soap under vacuum, solidifying it with a dry consistency. Motorized blades scrape the dry soap from the walls of the atomizer. The soap falls directly into an extrusion machine that operates similarly to a pasta-making machine. The machine forces the soap through small round dies while rotating blades cut it into noodles. As the soap noodles fall onto the conveyor belt, the soap workshop manager evaluates the quality by assessing color, aroma, and texture. The noodles are then compressed into a homogeneous paste, and a long continuous bar is extracted. An automated guillotine cuts the bar into the desired shape. The freshly cut soap bars are placed in drying and curing areas. During this period, which can last several months, the soap completes its saponification process and dries completely. Workers stack the soap bars in a cylindrical tower that allows sufficient airflow to cool them. They are left to dry for six months. The conveyor belt transports the bars to the stamping machine. Presses come into action to give them the final shape and stamp them. Mechanical arms suction the bars to pull them out of the press. These mechanical pushers take the soap bars out of the press and push them onto the arms. The soap bars travel to the packaging area, where an operator cuts and seals the plastic wrapping in a single motion. They then pick up the wrap bars and load them into a machine that places them in boxes. Like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel by activating notifications to continue learning.